Diabetes is a huge epidemic. There are about 400 million people worldwide that struggle with the condition. For each of them, diabetes is an independent journey. They have particular and individual struggles with the disease, with the choices that they make, the testing that they have to do, the medications that they take, and their interactions with healthcare professionals. Cost of managing diabetes is huge. It's, it's huge on a personal perspective. If I'm a patient with diabetes, there are increased costs because I have to test more, because I have to take more medications, because I have to monitor, and I probably have more interactions with my health professionals, and I probably end up in the hospital with complications more often than somebody who doesn't have diabetes. From a societal perspective, having to deal with the economic burden of diabetes is huge. Diabetes has a lot of complications that are very advanced complications, heart attacks, kidney failure, blindness, and that is an economic and that is a societal cost. For the most part of my career, the randomized controlled clinical trial has been the gold standard to which I have attached my understanding of biology and science. But the randomized controlled clinical trial is one of the many instruments that can be used for data generation activities. And the main limitation of a randomized controlled clinical trial is that the population that is enrolled in such trials is very precisely selected based on a number of inclusion and exclusion criteria. That makes finally the population that is studied very suitable for benefit risk evaluations in drug development terms, but it doesn't capture the richness and if you want the complexity of what happens when a drug is then used outside of the confines of uh, such a trial. Real world data, real world information is vital to us in clinical practice. Yes, we have the efficacy information from randomized controlled trials that tell us how well a therapy or how safe a therapy acts in a specific, very controlled environment. But I wanna know what is the effectiveness of that therapy when I prescribe it in my clinic to a patient that might not meet the criteria for these strict randomized controlled trials. I have become a passionate supporter of extending the understanding of how medication works in the real world uh, by complementing our activities in randomized controlled clinical trials with the analysis of real-world data using real-world evidence analytics. When we study diabetes and we want to understand the performance of a new drug for the treatment of diabetes, we have to establish the benefit-risk profile not only in relationship to events that are easy to observe, but also in relationship to events that are rare. A typical example of this is hypoglycemia. One of the key priorities is to minimize the, the experience or the risk of patients uh, with hypoglycemia. In the first 12 weeks of treatment, when they are starting basal insulin therapy, for example, Experiencing hypoglycemia may cause them to abandon the therapy, reduce the therapy, not uptitrate the therapy as we would expect. Patients with severe hypoglycemic events often end up in an emergency room, might be hospitalized, and incur both personal and financial costs. Hypoglycemia can be studied in a randomized controlled clinical trial but it pushes the limit of this instrument. We want to move that knowledge not only from understanding how each single insulin uh, performs against standard of care, but how different types of insulin perform against each other. That requires hundreds of thousands of individuals. And this is not doable, economically speaking, in randomized controlled clinical trials. This is where Real-world data sets are very useful in extending the knowledge in that direction. And this is where real-world analytics allows to uh, compare the performance of one insulin versus another in very large groups of people. I think it's very important for uh, physicians, especially primary care physicians that take care of the bulk of patients with type 2 diabetes, to have evidence-based information on the insulin therapy options that are available, and, and specifically basal insulin options. 
There are a number of them and we have information from both randomized controlled trials and real world trials that give us a lot of information that we can use to optimize and individualize treatment for our patients with type 2 diabetes. We have a need of accelerating that establishment of knowledge and what real world evidence has done has been among other things to reduce dramatically the time to achieve that knowledge. In the space of two and a half years we have been able to do what we have done in the past in a decade. It allows physicians and patients to use even with more confidence uh, insulin, especially during the titration period, by reducing dramatically the risk of hypoglycemia. Real-world evidence has allowed us to do something else, which is to compare next-generation insulin to next-generation insulin. So we are comparing ourselves to our competitor, and that is important because diabetes is a disease that is different in each patient. And approaches like real-world evidence and some methodological, statistical analysis to support it will eventually allow us to identify the subgroups of people for whom this insulin versus the other insulin is the better therapeutic options. Predictive modeling is a statistical, mathematical approach that allows to use, first of all, the full power of the database as it exists. It doesn't create boundaries. It uses artificial intelligence methodologies, delivers information that perhaps we could not have imagined before starting the analysis. What real-world studies or real-world data can also give us is information regarding resource utilization and the financial costs of implementing a certain therapy or treatment in clinical practice. It's important for patients, it's important for providers, and it's important for payers. Real-world evidence extends randomized controlled clinical trials, frees us up from the artificial confines of this instrument, and allows us to get to a greater knowledge of how drugs perform in real life conditions. This is a terrific opportunity, not only for drug developers, but also for the entire scientific ecosystem that revolves around bringing a new medication to the marketplace. And ultimately, this will be of great benefit to the patients because we will be able progressively to personalize medicine more and more.